scientists. My name is Janae and I am a vice president at Learning Undefeated, a nonprofit organization that provides life-changing STEM experiences for students from underserved communities. Today, I'm here in my kitchen to talk to you a little bit about the science of bread baking. Did you know that most bread is only made with four simple ingredients? That's right, yeast, salt, flour, and sugar. If you have those things lying around your house, you can make a delicious loaf of bread tonight for dinner. And that is where the chemistry comes in. That's right, you might be surprised to learn that there's actually a lot of chemistry in baking. That's why it's important that you accurately measure your ingredients because not when you're baking, you're actually building a chemical reaction. The materials that you'll need to do this experiment at home are as follows. Two identical water bottles, warm water, two identical balloons. It's great if they're different colors, it'll help you keep track of which is which. Sugar, measuring spoons, a funnel, and yeast. All right, now let's talk a little bit about yeast. You might be surprised to learn that yeast is actually alive. That's right, whether you buy it at the grocery store in a jar like this, you can check it out, see it's got all sorts of little grains in there, or you buy it in a small packet, either way, the yeast is dried. It's actually just waiting to be activated. Yeast is a small single-celled organism that feeds on simple sugars. What it does is it breaks those simple sugars down into carbon dioxide, ethanol, and flavor molecules. So it gives your bread its flavor, as well as creating carbon dioxide bubbles, which is what causes the bread to rise. This process is called fermentation. If you wanna make sure that your water is the right temperature, you can use a digital thermometer. Now, the ideal temperature for water to activate yeast is between 105 and 110 degrees Fahrenheit. So let me test my water temperature to make sure. Perfect, 109 degrees. All right, now we're ready to do our experiment. So what we're going to do is first take the lids off our two bottles and using the funnel, we're going to add two and a quarter teaspoons of yeast to each bottle. Now, if you purchase your yeast from the grocery store in a small packet, this is the exact amount that's already in your packet. So all you need to do is open the yeast and put it in there. All right, so two and a quarter in this one. Very good. Okay. And two and a quarter in this one. Okay, very good. All right, so we're done with the yeast. Set that aside. Now to one of the bottles, just one of the bottles, we're also going to add two teaspoons of sugar. Okay. Now based on what we just discussed about the yeast feeding on simple sugar, this is where you can formulate a hypothesis in terms of what you think might happen to the two different bottles. Okay, so now in each bottle we have yeast and in one bottle we have sugar. Now to each bottle, we're going to add a half a cup of warm water. Now, as I mentioned, you wanna try and keep your water around 110 degrees, which means it feels warm to the touch, but not hot. We don't wanna boil the yeast, we just wanna activate it. Oh, that one, we need a little extra water. Okay, still warm, good. Okay, half a cup of warm water to each. All right. And then we're going to put the lids on each of them and just swirl them around to make sure that all the ingredients are mixed up. Okay, both the swirl. Very good. Okay, now you're going to take the top off and to each bottle, you're going to cover with a balloon. Now these are small round balloons. I did stretch them out a little bit in advance just to make sure that they, whoops, just to make sure that they would stretch enough to cover the neck of the bottle. Okay, so our sugar has a blue balloon and our not sugar has a yellow balloon. All right, make sure that it totally covers the, the neck of your bottle and that there's no other way for air to escape. Okay, now, we just have to wait one hour. Okay, it's been an hour. Let's check out our water bottles to see what's going on. 
All right, so if you remember, we had two identical water bottles with two identical sets of yeast and water. The only difference is that one of the bottles had sugar added, one of the bottles didn't. So as you can see, the bottle that had sugar added rose more quickly and quite a bit more substantially than the water bottle that only had yeast. And as you can see by taking a look, this one also has quite a lot of foam and fizz inside, which actually is that carbon dioxide that the that the yeast is making. That's what makes your bread rise. So if you wanted to try this at home, what you could do is add a little bit of sugar to your dough recipe or to your bread recipe, which would help the yeast, yeast rise more quickly, as well as help your bread become fluffier. Now, if you wanna try this at home, I'm gonna include for you my recipe for homemade pizza dough. So you can try this out in the kitchen tonight with a delicious pizza. All right, that's it. I hope you'll join us tomorrow for more at-home science experiments. This is Learning Undefeated, over and out.